after all the negativity all week, plenty of it coming from me, by the way, the Packers have an opportunity on Sunday night, an opportunity to shock the world, maybe to shock themselves, a chance to show this season is not going to waste. Let's have some positivity on today's show. Let's take the glass half full view of what this team has in front of it. Plus, our pal Lily Zhao for Zhao You Doing. She is fired up. Let's go. You are locked on Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. You can follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Zhao, you doing on the program today, Lily Zhao from Fox Six is here, and we've we've already done the interview, um, just a little behind the scenes TV magic, and Lily is as fired up as I've ever seen her, and so I'm I'm really excited to get to that. Um, as I said at the top, there's been a lot of negativity this week, and I've certainly been a part of it because I have been highly critical of Aaron Rodgers. I've been highly critical of. The play calling, I've been highly critical of uh, certain approaches. Now, did I go on a national talk show and say that guys who are making mental mistakes shouldn't be playing? No, I didn't do that. Did I go on a national radio show and and say um, I had my best game of the year? Like that makes a bit of difference to anyone in a loss to an embarrassing football organization? No, I didn't. But I want to reframe what is going on on Sunday because the Packers are double-digit underdogs for the first time in Aaron Rodgers' career. And they, for the first time in a long time, get to go into a game as a nobody-believes-in-us team, as an us-against-the-world team, a back-against-the-wall team. This team has been playing the favorite, really, for the better part of the last 15 years. And, and really, before that, going back to the Brett Favre era, really, really the better part of 30 years. And so, this is a different vibe, a different feel. 2016 has been invoked, evoked as well. If they, if they do it, it could evoke those memories. And 2010 has been mentioned that that team started 4 and 4. Now I don't I don't think we should compare this team to a team that didn't trail by a touchdown more than a touchdown all season. No. The Packers are not that. This version of Aaron Rodgers is not that. These skilled position players are not that. Charles Woodson's not walking through that door. Clay Matthews in his absolute physical prime not walking through that door. Although Rashawn Gary is a, is a pretty good substitute. But I was asked how beating the Bills would change my perspective on this team. And that's what got me thinking about this. And I thought coming into the year, and I, you know, I was pretty vocal about it on this show and, and on The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to, about my belief that this team would be able to ham and egg it together, that they would, that the defense would make up for the offensive shortcomings. I did not see the offensive shortcomings being nearly this big because I didn't see Aaron Rodgers playing this poorly. I didn't see the offensive line playing this poorly. And I didn't see um, the, the atrophy in approach for the Packers. Four motion plays, five play action plays on Sunday. Didn't love that. Haven't loved that this season. But I still said this can be one of the two or three best teams in the league. And if you can get one play a week from Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson, that's going to be enough. Well, Randall Cobb's hurt. Sammy Watkins has been hurt. Alan Lazard is now hurt. 
Christian Watson is now hurt. I mean, it's going to have to be the Romeo Dobbs show and and maybe like Juwan Winfrey and Samori Touré. Like it may have to be all the rookies on Sunday, although Sammy Watkins in a revenge spot as well. Hopefully that hamstring is feeling a little bit better on Sunday. I was a little too tough on Sammy after um, Sunday and Monday after going back and getting a chance to actually sit down and, and watch the games again and look at the coach's tape and understand, okay, well, the play that Sammy Watkins didn't block anybody on fourth down was actually not, uh, we think, but this has been confirmed by some other people who know these things, that that's probably the route. It's actually a concept. And if Rodgers doesn't throw it right away, he could throw it to Sammy Watkins for a a walk-in touchdown. This is a team that has not shown it can be a contender. Now, in the NFC, what does that even mean? I think we have to ask that question too. Like outside of Philadelphia, is anyone that interesting in the NFC? Seattle is leading the the uh, NFC West. I, b- I believe Atlanta in, the, in a tie for first in the, in the NFC South at three and four. And the Minnesota Vikings are a completely fraudulent five and one. Games are closer than they've ever been. Average margin of victory is is down over a full point over what it's been. These games are closer in one score games. It's one play here. It's one play there. And that's the Packers know that. They're they're ball they're they're a chance at a hail mary in each of the last two games. In the Washington case, a chance to win it, and and in the case of the the Giants game, a chance to send it to overtime. So, you know, look. They've been in these games, but they haven't they haven't looked like anything contender wise. But if they beat the Bills, or even if they just go hang with the Bills, as banged up as they are, especially offensively, it makes you start to recalibrate. Because I think over the last three weeks, we've also had to recalibrate. Okay, this team is really sloppy. Um, the quarterback is not playing at a high level, which makes it that everyone is pressing on offense. Um, the receivers are dropping passes left and right. Uh, mental mistakes. Aaron Rodgers told Pat McAfee that 20% of their plays they have mental errors on. Um, he said, you know, on, on Sunday they you know ran about 50 plays and had about 10 mental errors. He said normally it's about half that. But you think about five plays. Five plays can make a huge difference in the game. The problem is we're through seven weeks now and they keep making these errors. And then the offense struggling in the second half compounds with the defense, which is playing really well in the first half. And so it's creating this snowball effect. But if you go out and hang with the Bills or better, beat the Bills. And I know this is a tall order. I'm talking about a 10 and a half point favorite. The Bills have been a juggernaut this season. But that juggernaut lost to the Dolphins who have not been a super impressive team so far this season. And the Bills last year Lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Urban Meyer Jacksonville Jaguars. The Bills at one point last year, I believe, lost five of seven games. They've done this where they just go into these lulls and Josh Allen can just lose his mind temporarily. And the Packers defense in the first half last week, flying around. They are due for some turnovers with the way that they are playing fast, flying around and getting to the quarterback. This is a Bills offensive line that you can take some advantage of. Now, I don't think they can play a bunch of man coverage against this team because Josh Allen will rip you apart with his legs if you do that. But you also, the the Packers have shown they can't just sit in these two-shell zones because they're not disciplined enough to deal with it. But what if you are? What if the game that you are is this game? What if you have your Chiefs game performance against Patrick Mahomes and make him look befuddled? What if you have the game against Russell Wilson where guys are shutting down DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett and, and you're getting after the quarterback and you score just enough to win. That recalibrates everything. And that reaffirms that this team can be that top level kind of team in the NFC. Even, let's just say they, they go out there and they lose 24-20. But it's close the whole way. It's nip and tuck. And they have a chance at the end of the game to, to drive or let's say the Bills... Um, you know, they get a field goal late, it's 21-20, and they get a field goal late, and it's 24-20, and the Packers can't do anything on the last drive. 
but it was close and they play well. You go, okay, they can beat everyone left on their schedule. Everyone, that's the thing. And I mentioned this yesterday. The the cynic view is, well, they've got to play the Eagles. That team is good. They got to play the Dolphins. That team is decent in Miami. That's going to be tough on Christmas Day. You got to play the Cowboys. That team is tough with Dak Prescott. We'll see how they look. Still got to play the Vikings again. The Lions are tough just because they're the Lions and they're scrappy and they played the Packers really tough the last few years. The Bears suddenly look like a competent NFL team. Justin Fields has a higher EPA per play than Aaron Rodgers right now. Yikes. Um, But if we go out and see it, if we see them go out and hang with a really good team or beat a really good team or almost beat a really good team, you know, the Packers take the lead. The Packers take a 24-20 lead with two minutes left and Josh Allen leads them down the field. They get the game-winning touchdown and you go, oh my God, we could have beat that team. That makes you go, okay, they can beat anyone then. They can beat anybody. And that leaves open the possibility of the run the table, the relax, the, you know, whatever. Even even the 2010 scenario. Because if you can hang with this team, you can hang with anybody. And in an NFC that is wide open, why not Green Bay? You're going to get a chance to go play Philly. You're going to get a chance to go play Dallas. I think those are the two best teams in the NFC right now. And the answer about who is the third best team in the NFC is right now is there isn't one. I think the 49ers can get there when they get healthy, if they get healthy, but we don't know if they're going to get healthy. Christian McCaffrey can't stay healthy. George Kittle has never stayed healthy. Nick Bosa has had injury issues. Fred Warner has had injury issues. The offensive line is banged up and, and wasn't great when they were healthy. So look, it's all still out there for Green Bay. They still have the talent. You don't just forget how to football. And I think that's all still in there for Green Bay. It is these this conglomeration. It is, it is the accumulation of information, right? It's all these little things. And then, as Aaron Rodgers said, if, if you have 10 mental mistakes in a game and you cut that down to five, that's five plays. Now, you know, as, as was joked... If we're if we're gonna be reducing reps for anybody and people making mental errors, then I guess you know Jordan Love gets some first team practice reps. You know, other people are making that joke. I'm not making that joke, but other I've seen other people make that joke. That's that's as much about Aaron Rodgers as anything else. But we're talking about the guy who has not lost in 13 straight primetime games. We're talking about the guy who has the second highest passer rating. Um, uh, in in primetime games in NFL history, going back to 1970, Josh Allen is first. So if this looks like Packers Bills, if it looks like the game that we thought it was going to be before the season, and then the, and they lose, but it's close, that's going to let us know that th- that team is in there. And we saw it last year. They go to they go to Arizona and they get a win on the road against a really good football team, or at least a team playing really good football. And we saw it against Kansas City in a, in a valiant effort against Patrick Mahomes with Jordan Love. We saw it against Russell Wilson. We saw it against the Rams, a team that won the Super Bowl. They played their best last year against the best competition. If this brings out their best and we get to see their best and their best can at least, you know, run with. Not just, I'm not talking about if they lose 24-17 and the game never feels close or or it's 24-14 you know, like, I don't mean just sort of like, oh, they do the thing that, you know, every SEC team that is at the bottom of the table does with Alabama and it's 17-14 at halftime and then it ends up 42-14. Like, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actually in the game in the fourth quarter with a chance to win or win. That allows us to reset expectations and should give the team confidence that that they already have. But validation, not even confidence, validation, it validates them. Forget should, it does validate them that they can be the team that we all thought they could be going into the season. All right, before we get to our pal, Lily Zhao, let's talk about Bird Dogs, a company I am very quickly falling in love with. I have to say, I really am because I, I, I'm, I'm wearing the, the, the joggers right now. I'm wearing the Tiger Woods joggers right now. I love them. I find excuses to wear them. I really do. They're unlike anything that I have ever worn. They're great. 
perfect for fall golf. And, you know, look, you know, you know, the little Charmin bear. <laughs> Love the Charmin bear. It's like having him just sort of, you know, like rubbing your thighs a little bit. These are cheaper than Lululemon. Cheaper than Lululemon. Why, like, why would you wear something else? Why would you wear something else? It doesn't make sense. Go to birddogs.com and hit the promo code locked on, and they will throw in a free bird dogs rope hat, which I still have to do. I have to go, I have to go get that hat right now. I'm playing golf this weekend. Probably not gonna come in time, but I, I need the hat. The hat is dope. Wait till you see the hat. The hat is pretty dope. It's actually, if you're watching on YouTube, you can I think the hat is in the logo. Go to birddogs.com and use the promo code locked on and boom, a free rope hat with your pair of bird dogs, the most comfortable shorts, pants, and sweatpants with built-in liners. You will not want to take these things off. I promise. And these days, every new potential hire can make you feel like there's nothing out there for you because you're going to be overwhelmed with candidates that, look, they they just aren't right for you. LinkedIn Jobs wants to help. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy for you to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On Sports today. Not just today. It's called Locked On Sports today. That's my show. That's my all sports show. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on the app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. We just cannot get off the schneid. For the third week in a row, it's a loss. But we are resolute. We are going to keep going. We will not give up. We will not surrender, to quote the president from Independence Day. Lily Zhao joining me now from Fox 6 in Milwaukee. And uh, it feels a little bit like the apocalypse right now in Green Bay. <laughs> Lily, how are you doing? Hey, Peter. I, uh, I'm i surviving the apocalypse. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> It, it really feels like just weird times, right? Like it feels like the Rogers collarbone, but worse off because he's as, you know, he's quote unquote healthy. Minus yeah. um. Um, so I'm surviving. Uh, <laughs> it's been a very interesting week, but I'm doing well. Is that how you doing? I'm, I'm good. Um, there's a, there's a lot to get to here um, with what's going on. And I just, are you ready to see Jordan Love? No, let's not do that. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to do something, and I'm springing this on you. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do something that I that I rarely do, um, but I I hope that um, you will you will trust me. Okay. I have said a lot of things about Aaron Rodgers the last couple of weeks. Things that I, a lot of people don't like about the amount of blame that I think belongs to Aaron Rodgers. If you think that I am going too far, I want you to tell me why. Yeah. Well, and I even said it last week. I said, you know, what spark do they need? I'm like, it has to be Aaron Rodgers playing better. Um, It's got to start with him. Um, I don't think you're out of line for saying that because when you're looking at his play, it's far from what we expect. It's far from what we know he can do. Two time or his back-to-back MVP I mean, this guy won an MVP last year. The, the drop-off has been significant. We know there's a lot of changes. I don't think there is any, you know, detriment in saying a lot of it is on him. I mean, he is the face of this franchise. He's making so much money. He's the man, right? And when you're the man, the BMOC, as he said on the Pat McAfee show, you got to just play better. And I don't know what it is. Um, you know, I, I, I know there's a lot of talk being – like, oh, it could be this group is the issue, this, that, and the other. But I think Aaron Rodgers does have to take a lot of onus and say, I need to play better. Like, I need to play better. And it all trickles down from there. So I don't think what you're saying is is crazy or anything. I have said a lot of things about Aaron Rodgers. So I I, I phrased that poorly. And I, I, I know you know that I've said a lot of things about Aaron Rodgers. And you're just like, can you pick one thing that you said? Um, I, I, I think what's interesting is we knew the offensive line was going to be coming back from injury. We knew that they were going to be doing some shuffling. 
you kind of have to have a wait and see on that. We knew the receivers were not going to be as good as last year. We know they're integrating at least one rookie. Theoretically, they were trying to integrate two. And then you bring in Sammy Watkins. We knew that that was not going to be as good as last year. We didn't expect this version of Aaron Rodgers. And so that's where I'm coming from going, look, the biggest difference last year to this year versus expectation is Aaron Rodgers. We expected the offensive line to be a little bit worse early on. We expected the receivers to be a little bit worse. We expected Aaron Rodgers to be an MVP and he's not playing like it. So I just... I, I wanted I wanted to, you know, give give you a chance to be fair to my audience with me because they hear me say a lot of things about Aaron Rodgers and I tweet a lot of things about Aaron Rodgers. And so I I just I think that's 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 useful um to move forward here. How do you how do you think they find some answers? Is it just Rodgers needs to play better? Is it changes to the playbook? Is it just like Romeo Dobbs needs to play better? Like what is what is the the easiest like short answer, even though I know it's not a short answer. Um, I wish I knew the answer. Um, yeah. I think that the Packers would probably pay you a lot of money if you had the answer. That's true. I mean, listen, I'm available. I can play. Maybe I'm the answer. <laughs> just, <laughs> just kidding. Um, I, I will say though, those drops certainly don't help. I mean, it was that throw, throw to Amari. If he makes it, it's a different narrative. They probably go in and score different ball game. You know, that even I will say that first, you know, throw to Christian Watson week one where he drops it, he makes that catch different narrative. I don't know if it's just these guys are kind of like going in defeated as, oh, it's just going to be another struggle on offense and they're just not their focus. But I just don't think I've ever seen this, this amount of receivers have this many drops. And that doesn't help Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, just being on his side there, like, yeah, you're throwing a good ball and it's not being caught. What can you do? You can't do anything. But then, you know, you see him throwing it low to Romeo Dobbs. And I don't know, again, when the camera caught him saying, what are we doing? I don't know if he was saying that to Romeo or the sideline or whatever, but there was frustration there. So I think, you know, he expects these guys to catch the ball, but then on the other hand, you need to put the ball in better positions for these guys to make catches. Um, I think it goes both ways, but again, the drops certainly don't help but he has certainly not been as accurate as years past. If they somehow can just fix that problem, I mean, that just solves a lot of things. I know people are saying that the trade deadline's coming up in a week. Even if you had somebody, is that going to help when, you know, Aaron Rodgers isn't his normal self? Probably not. Um, so I don't know what it is. It's like he's got to just go through drills with his, with his receivers and just start throwing because I'm like, yeah, Bailey Zappi coming in yesterday cold. In the Patriots game and sling it down the field, and his, his guys are catching it. I'm like, I don't know what the disconnect is in in title now. Actually, cold too. It looked like it was a miserable time in in Chicago. Yeah, it didn't look. Fun. Or I'm sorry, in New England um, against Chicago, it um, it did not seem great. Wet. Mm, that like New England rain too is just the worst. Oggy. It's, it's yeah. bone chilling cold. Yeah, it's not the best. Um, that that's the other thing is like. I, I, I look around the league and I see these teams and like you watch the game Monday night. And I said this on the show uh, yesterday. Guys are open, like, like in some cases wide open and not because they cooked a corner, but because play action design, like they're, they're scheming their guys open. And it's like, where is this from green Bay? Like we, we thought Matt LaFleur was a really good designer of offense. And this offense seems so unimaginative to me right now. Like at, at what point do we start going, Matt LaFleur, like we got to, we got to find some answers here, buddy. Like maybe, maybe you're not as good a, a, a play designer and, and schemer as we thought. Yeah, I totally agree. Because again, like you mentioned, you're watching these receivers, bears and Patriots just wide open. And you're like, okay, so they're scheming these guys open. And Those that was like a stable good. for the past. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, but that was such a stable when Matt LaFleur came in, he, it was his ability to scheme guys open. I don't know what the, the fallout has been since then. But it's just so many sideline to sideline passes where guys are getting like three yards per pass. And you're like, go downfield. You know, it was, um, you know, the middle of the field, attack the middle of the field. They just can't do it. They're always throwing side to side. And they're, you know, it, nothing was really helping. The play action game hasn't been a staple. You know, those off schedule plays where Rodgers is scrambling out of the pocket hasn't really happened at all as well. Um, there's a lot of things that make this offense really, really good that we haven't seen so far. And it's been seven weeks. So it's kind of like, why has it not happened? Um, it's been almost two months of football and it still looks like week one where they don't really know what they're doing, which again is very surprising to say with the amount of talent on this offense. 
do you come out of the game on Sunday feeling better, worse, or the same about the defense? Uh, I would say the same. I mean, listen, I know Devontae Campbell, that pick six was phenomenal. I think they yeah. should have had many, many other picks. They just couldn't hold on to them. Mm-hmm. But the narrative has been the same. They do well in the first half. They let up in the second. And that's when teams, whether they're a Bills caliber or not, Oof. have been able to take advantage. And that's the discouraging thing. But I will also say the one thing that does not help is that every time an opposing team, in the second half at least, has a scoring drive, the Packers' offense cannot respond. It's either a three and out or it's a first down and a three and out. Like, they can't do anything. And then that leads to the defense being on the field for way too many minutes. So, you know, the ball hawking was there in the first half, but it certainly slipped after that. And the penalties, that doesn't help as well. I I tend to think of you as very even-handed. And this is, it's, it's a little subtle, but like we've talked enough. This is like the most worked up that I've seen you about a Packers team in terms of frustration <laughs> that I, that like ever. Yeah. Cause I'm like, the talent is there. The talent is there. <laughs> I don't know what the disconnect is. Like I really don't Peter. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. I, I, I don't either. Um, and, and I have to try and do this show and try to explain it and go, I just, I'm so sometimes I just want to put my hands up. Like, I don't, I don't know. This is crazy. What, what is, how, why, why can't this stop happening? It's not like 2018 where we sort of felt like that team was just fatally flawed in, in ways that I don't know that this team is. Um, but, but maybe we have to start talking about that. Let's talk about the bills because well, <laughs> we have to, because the Packers are playing them this week. Um, can, can you put together a roadmap of just like, okay, if the Packers can, can be competitive and, and, be in this game and have a chance to win, it looks like what? Uh, it looks like they need to play their butts off to shock the world. <laughs> play a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Aaron Rodgers even touched upon it. You know, that you know the, the 2016 season, the run the table season, it was that Monday night game and they won that and went from there. Again, it's going to be a really tall task on Sunday night. Granted, the Patriots, the Bills, different levels there. We saw what Chicago was able to do on the road in prime time. Packers have to summon up all that energy and shock the world and do it on Sunday night. Whether or not they can do it or not is, is another thing. But I will say, if they can look better, I feel like this team plays up to their competition. I think they're going to look better. Whether or not they win is a different story. I still think it's going to be if they keep it close in the first half or maybe they're potentially even leading by a field goal, but then the second half is what doesn't end because they just haven't been able to salt things away. Again, Crazier things have happened in football. Maybe, again, like we've talked about, this Packers team just goes off and beats the Bills on Sunday night football. It's going to be tough, but they need a signature win just to get them going, just to get them, like, to get that momentum going. If they can do it Sunday night, I think this is what turns their season around. But if they put together a dud of a performance at Buffalo, I mean, it's – don't really know what else to say. Yeah, four straight losses. Um, You're you're sitting way back of Minnesota – you know, irrespective of what happens, you know, they're, they're already two and a half games back. Um, and, and, uh, it's getting, it's getting tough. No, three games back, right. Three and a half games yeah, back yeah. With, with the tiebreaker. Yeah. Um, interestingly, 2014, the Packers went to Buffalo late in that season, lost to the bills. It cost them the one seed and ultimately cost them the chance to play Seattle at home rather than going to Seattle, which I think you can make the case was at least like one of the 18 things that went wrong in that championship game, maybe doesn't go wrong and the <laughs> Packers win. And maybe they have another super bowl. There's, there's some, like, if you want to go revenge game here, there's some tie-ins. Jordy Nelson drops a pass that is the game sealer. Um, you know, th- we don't have to go down that role. Packer fans are hurting enough right now, Lily. Um, don't but I, I, <laughs> It's it is interesting. I think that um, the the recipe that that you lay out, if you're going to say, okay, the Packers can beat the Bills, if it's sort of the recipe that teams have been trying to use on Green Bay forever, limit the big plays, control the clock, keep it close, and try and get a turnover or or some sort of play that just sort of flips a close game that it shouldn't, and and like that's sort of where the Packers are right now, and they kind of need to play like underdogs. Like, cause that's what they are. They're a 10, depending on where you look between nine and a half and 11 and a half point underdogs to the bills. They got to play like underdogs. They really do. Because, you know, I think somebody asked, uh, I think John Runyon in the, in the locker room, Hey, are you guys taking kind of like an us versus the world mentality? 
something in, in a roundabout way. He's like, there really is nobody expects us to win on Sunday night except for ourselves. They have to really play like, listen, we have nothing to lose at this point. The Bills do, you know, they don't want to lose to us. You know, they're heavily favored at home in prime time. Why not go out there and fall out? You know, there's there's nothing to lose in this game but to add more pride and to get a signature win. It is imperative, I think, for this team. They need to look sharp. They need to put, put together their best game plan of this season because I feel like if they can at least make some sort of statement, that might turn things around and, and trickle down for them. Because just going back to that Bears game against the Patriots, they probably could have won 41 to 14. I mean, maybe this is what turns their season around. Around. The Packers need that same sort of performance in prime time as well. Look, they had it in prime time in 2016 when they ran the table against Philadelphia. Um, but that was the Devontae Adams breakout game. Devontae Adams not walking through that door. Last thing for you, Lily. Um, Aaron Rodgers did his Pat McAfee thing um, yesterday. And some of the things that he said made made some waves, including that um, according to Tom Clements, he had his highest graded game of the year. Okay. Uh, and that he said, Aaron Rodgers, that he thinks that the guys who are making these mental mistakes should play less, um, that that rep should get cut without necessarily going into who you think those guys are, though I think we can probably make some, um, draw some conclusions there. Do you think that is the right way to handle this? And do you think that's the right way for Rodgers to be handling this in public right now? I, I don't know if it was the smartest thing to go out and say, Hey, those guys who are making mental mistakes, let's cut their reps. I think you see, you can say that in, internally, but I don't know if you want to say that on a national show like this, because again, it's going to make airwaves. It's probably going to be talked about. It's going to get back to the, to the locker room. And I'm sure those guys who are probably thinking, Oh, I think he's talking about me. That's going to get to them instead of being like, okay, we really got to rally together as a team. We got to figure something out. So I don't, because that, that adds to the outside noise. You know, they talk about limiting that outside noise that adds to it. And, you know, the last thing you want to do is you want to nurture these guys to get better. They're young. They can get better. I think what you don't want to put on them is, Hey, it's been seven games. You suck. Let's cut your reps. Let's bring in somebody else. Sorry. Like that's all you get. You know what I mean? Like I think it should, probably should have been worded differently, but I don't know. Or maybe it's this guy takes it as like motivation is like, I got to play my ass off, you know, like maybe I'll take it as that kind of motivation. Um, but there's certainly a lot of this, this, and this going around. A lot of the, if you're not watching us on YouTube, Lily pointed a lot of different directions. There's a lot of finger pointing going on right now, publicly. And by the way, behind the scenes, um, interestingly though, uh, on Sunday night football, the two highest rated quarterbacks in Sunday night football history with at least 300 attempts, Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Rodgers has not lost in prime time in prime time in 13 tries. So um, he is money on prime time. And if there's going to be a time to do it, no pun intended. Now is, now is the time Lily fired up Lily Zhao. I love to see it. Thank you so much. And we will talk to you next week. I don't care when loser dry wants you this fired up next week. I will be. Don't you worry. I'm going to get like two cups of coffee. I'll be <laughs> We're going to go. <laughs> thanks Peter all right thanks to Lily for joining the show awesome to talk she was fired up she was fired up I could just tell midway through the interview I was like she is crushing this right now because she is fired up and look I want to be fair because I know even some of you who listen every day to the show are going Peter dude chill out on Aaron Rodgers chill out man chill out look I can only tell you what I'm seeing and I'm, and what what I am experiencing as I'm looking at, at everything that's going on. So I, I gave Lily the chance to be like, nah, dude. And I think, you know, Lily and I are, are friends beyond this show. And so I, I trust that if she thought I was being a jerk, she would tell me even on air. I think she would. Um, and so look, at least even if you don't agree, at least you're hearing it from someone else and not just me. And I think that's, that's an important thing. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy done right because you're not competing against other people. You're not competing against the finance bro who's got the team of analytics folks who are like putting together all running all the numbers and they're putting together the optimized lineups and you just have no shot. And and they're spending tens of thousands of dollars on lineups um, to hit and and get those margins that are that are really small. But when you're using a lot of money, it doesn't matter. No, no, that's not what this is. 
Price picks, they pick a stat total. So Aaron Jones, 0.5 rushing touchdowns. You can you can bet if you think it's going to be more or less. It's it's easy. And so you can go to prize picks and pick two to five players that you think will score more or less than their projection and win up to 10 times your money. No competing against other people. It's you versus the projections available. They have sports maybe you've never even heard of. You just have to go to the app and check it out. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can get 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. You put in 100 bucks, they give you 100 bucks. It's that easy. Promo code locked on when you sign up to get that instant deposit match up to $100. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big recaps, and the take of the day. I host it. I'm on it. And I, I would love it if you would go check it out. It's Always, always, always shorter than this show. Put them back to back. Little double header. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. All right. We're going to be back tomorrow. Crossover Thursday. Joe Marino locks on Bills. Uh, one of the smartest guys on our network in terms of the teams that he covers and 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 a big draft guy as well. So um, a lot to be excited about there. And then, um, again, I, I hinted at this uh, potential guest that we have for our Friday show. I don't want to ruin it. I think we're going to do a two-part Friday show. We'll do the guest, and then we'll do the live show. And uh, in in podcast form, there'll be one, but in YouTube form, there'll be two. I think that's what we're going to do. I think that's what makes the most sense. So I'll come on. I'll do a live for you know about 15 minutes, um, talk injuries, and get get a set for Packers Bills, and then go from there. Uh, follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. And if you want to hang out with us live on Friday or after the game, you can do that on our Locked on Packers YouTube page to stay Locked on Packers.